virtual summits are the most powerful online marketing tool available to grow your list, launch your platform, make more money, and create an impact in the world, even if you're just getting started. If you are ready to take your summit to the next level, then tune into the Virtual Summit Podcast with Dr. Mark T. Wade. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark T. Wade, founder of Virtual Summit Software and creator of the One Day Summit Formula. And I'm on a mission to help you, the summit host, get your summit out to the world in a powerful and impactful way. So let's get started. Hey, Summit host, Dr. Mark T. Wade here, founder of Virtual Summit Software and your host on the Virtual Summit Podcast. I am super excited about today's episode. We're going to be chatting with James Taylor. Thanks so much for coming out today and uh, sharing your insights with our audience, James. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm waving at you from the other side of the pond just now. Good, good to have, good to be with you, Mark. I, I really appreciate it. And I'm waving back to you from sunny Puerto Rico. We've, we've noticed the accent. I love the accent. It's going to make the viewers, the audience listen even better. So we're going to get some really amazing insight in this. Now, James is a professional speaker and he's done five virtual summits and we're going to be covering some pretty interesting topics, topics and information that we have not talked about on this podcast yet. I'm really interested in diving deep into the evergreening aspect of summits and we're going to talk about corporate summits, going B2B, and then a multi-language aspect is that. Now, before we get into those specific details, James, I would love for you to tell the audience just a little bit more about yourself. Sure. So my background is I'm, today I'm a professional speaker, keynote speaker. I speak on business creativity and artificial intelligence. So most of the time I'm on planes and going to speak at big, big uh, corporate conferences. But I didn't start my, my tradition, my, my background is I used to manage the careers of rock stars. So I worked with members of the Rolling Stones, multiple Grammy Award winners. And I was often the guy at the side of the stage or behind the scenes that was kind of like tweaking things and making things kind of happen and putting these big tours, big shows together. And then about 2010, uh, I was asked to go and join a company as vice president in California, a company which was all been online learning. And uh, if you know, but comes like Linda and Masterclass, it was like one of those types of businesses. And that was really fun because that got me to really go deep into how online learning works specifically and the opportunities there, but also how memberships and subscriptions, continuity programs work. So did that. We built, I think we launched like 30 online schools in the space of like four years. So it was like really fast growth. And then I decided I was getting asked to, to go and uh, speak more at conferences and other, other events. And so I decided to kind of make a little bit of a transition and, and move. And, and now I'm, I have the most amazing life. I get to go and just travel to incredible places and speak to people about creativity and, and AI. Yeah, and I, we could do a whole other session on AI. It's something that I find absolutely fascinating. But we won't take the, uh, our virtual summit host down that rabbit hole on this episode. But um, I'm really looking forward to picking your brain here, James, because I know you've done five summits and they, they're actually, most of them are kind of in different, at least different categories or different topics, which is fascinating to me. So before we, we dive into some of these other areas that I want to discuss, I'd love to kind of hear your thought process on that, why you decided to go with different types of summits versus just doing either the same sub summit or staying in that same vector. Sure. I mean, I think that with, with the summits thing originated is obviously I have a lot of experience more in events, live physical events, big festivals, outdoor events. And I thought I started seeing this thing. I think I got invited onto a summit initially. And I can't even remember what the summit was. I got invited onto this summit and I did it. And, and I thought, well, that's an interesting model. You know, that's, that's I wonder how that works from the other side. And so I started doing some research and a mutual friend of ours, Naveed, had this free training that was out there. It was like a, almost like a Jeff Walker style PLF, like three part series. And I, I, I just kind of watched that. I signed up for free, watched it. And I went, that's really interesting. And I, I kind of thought, well, I'm not necessarily sure if I'm willing to invest at this stage into a whole program, but let me just see if I can create something just from the, the, the free information that Navid was kindly kind of giving out there. So I basically kind of reverse engineered it and worked it out. And I decided to create my very first summit where I wasn't the face of it. I thought I'm going to put someone else in the face for it. And it's going to be an area that I know nothing about. 
so it's not my domain expertise. I'm actually going to make it on guitar. I'm not a guitar player. I know a lot of guitar players. So, I mean, this just goes to show if you're, if you're watching this just now, you can create pretty much a summit on any topic imaginable, even if it's not your domain. You don't even have to be the host. You can be the person behind the scenes. And there's great people that I know that just do that. They work with great hosts about creating summits. Virtual Summit's software makes hosting a summit easier than ever. The only software in the world designed specifically for hosting a summit lets you set up a summit in a matter of hours with no tech skill or team needed. You can try out the Virtual Summit's software free at virtualsummits.com. But hurry, this is a limited offer. So what we did is myself and I found two real amazing guitar players um, who were very strong in online education as well. And... Together, we put this thing together where myself and them, we interviewed, I think it was like 50 amazing uh, guitar players in a specific style of guitar playing. And this was the other thing I learned kind of that Naveed mentioned early on was about niching down to the point that it hurts. So rather than doing like a big overall, like you could go anyway guitar, we focused on this niche, which is like acoustic finger style and jazz guitar, like real niche. And I thought, no, I wonder if anyone's going to come on this summit. So we did it. We we got, re- we got it ready, interviewed everyone. We launched it. And in the first few days, I think we had over 10,000 attendees, free summit passes that signed up initially. And then obviously from that, we had a percentage that came into our VIPs. And on the back of that, we then upsold people initially into an online program, an online course. And on the back of that, we sold them into like a higher priced live event, a live guitar retreat. So that was interesting. I thought, wow, this is this is fun. This is cool. And it, you know, the first one, when you do the first summit, you're on a huge learning curve because you're trying to figure out the technology and how everything works. And but once you've done the first one, you know, it just inspires you. I don't know if you felt like this, Mark, when you do, do it, it's kind of like, okay, I want to do another one. So then I started thinking, well, what was the next summit that I wanted to do? And the next one I decided to do was around creativity, my topic. But I kind of made a little bit of a mistake. What I did was, I focus very, very B2C. And there in, in the world of creativity, there's lots of different markets in creativity. And I focused on, on that kind of very B2C market, people that are interested in their own personal creativity, tra- learning themselves, about learning about creativity, developing their own creativity. Fantastic. But that market is a hu- slightly harder one to sometimes upsell into other things. And it doesn't lend itself quite as well to the main thing which I do, which is my speaking programs and my big training things I do. So that was interesting. We got, we got thousands of people on that, but it didn't really feel like it gelled as well. And then as I was starting to get asked to speak more and more, I thought, you know, I wonder if I can use a summit to actually, I'm going to interview people on a topic that I'm just really interested in. I don't really care if it makes any money, frankly. I just want to be able to interview some of the world's best keynote speakers, which I am a professional keynote speaker all around the world. And I want to learn their tips from them. And then what I'll do is I'll just share these and make these available to other people in the form of a summit. So at that point I had no, there was no real profit motive there. It was primarily about learning from the best and then sharing it with other people. And what was interesting was, was a number of things. One is, you know, initially when you, you think there's really three reasons I think people do summits. One is positioning, great for positioning yourself. The other one is partnerships, building relationships, partnerships. And the final one is promotion because you want to promote a product or something you have perhaps on, on the back end. For me, that one ended up being as much as anything else about partnerships because what happened from working with some of these speakers who get paid, you know, 40, 50 K to give a 30 minute speech, they kind of told me some of the secret source and I got in on a, a little bit of an inside world. And, and then when we launched it from a positioning, I went from being like almost relatively unknown as a speaker to be suddenly being seen alongside these amazing other speakers. And I was interviewing about the craft and the marketing and the business and the, how, the, how the business works. I interviewed some of the top speaker bureaus and it really like put me fired me straight out of the gate. So if you're going into a completely new industry, new field, how to get known 101, do a virtual summit. It's like, it's like shoot you out the gate. You get known really, really quickly. And that was amazing. So we interviewed 65 of the world's best keynote speakers. And then I decided to evergreen that one. I know we're going to get into evergreen 
and we'll go a bit further in that. But I decided to evergreen what that one. That was interesting, that whole process. And then I thought, I wonder if I can create a summit. So instead of being on the front end about this for speakers, helping other speakers, what about if I could ha- create a summit that helps the people that book me as a speaker, which is the conference organizers, the executive directors of associations, the event directors of, of large conferences and, and events. And so I created uh, an event professional summit where I, uh, myself, and this time I brought in a co-host. I didn't want to do all the interviews myself on this. I brought in a friend of mine, Erin Gargan, who's a great speaker based in California. And so she interviewed all the American guests. I interviewed all the, all the outside of America, all the European, Asia, South America, Africa guests. And that was fantastic. And that suddenly when we launched that, that wasn't so much about bringing in lots and lots of uh, free pass people. That was about getting known and then upselling them onto our keynote programs. And so we interviewed people from TED, we interviewed people from South by Southwest, Uber, people that organize the big conferences from Microsoft and Adobe and all these kind of companies. And that was fantastic. That brought in lots of business and got us inquiries to speak all over the world. And then we evergreened that one. So that's now working every day. I'm getting 40 leads coming in a day. My speaking, they're just coming in. I'm not even thinking about it, just coming in. And then we did that one. And then the one after that we did was International Authors Summit. And once again, that was just me wanting to understand about how to become a, a great author. So I interviewed 45 New York Times bestselling authors, as well as book publicists and book marketers. And that was useful because that was really about learning from the best of the best. And it wasn't necessarily, I didn't have a product for authors. So for that one, I engineered it. So it's more about affiliate selling. So I interviewed a number of other guests who had great affiliate program, retreats for authors, marketing programs for authors, like uh, platforms, technology platforms specifically for authors. And so from that, we, I did lots of more like partnerships, affiliate revenue streams on the back of that. So in the end of it, I ended up with five online summits, three of which are now evergreen. The fourth one is just about to go evergreen. And it's, it was just a, a wild ride. And this was all in about the space of like three years or something. And then finally from that, I thought, okay, I, I better go and learn how to really do this. And then I started reaching and having more conversations with people like Navid, Ciprian Solaru, who's a great uh, friend of mine, who's really good on the evergreening side about scaling. And now we're, it's, it's all, we're focused a lot on the scaling side. That is such an interesting journey right there. And James, would you say with that, having like, cause it, it seemed like each summit kind of increased your level of knowledge or awareness or direction, which took you on to the next summit. Would you say these summits overall or in general have, how would you say they've impacted your business or your life? So in different ways. And I think this is why it's so important right at the start, you have to know what is your goal for creating a summit. So, you know, there's obviously list building. That's a great goal. And that's for some of our summits. That's one of our biggest goals is we're just building thousands and thousands of people on a list, you know, every month. For the biggest impact probably for me has been around learning, being able to build relationships and learn from the best and then get to share it with other people where they buy the, they get the free pass or the VIP. I don't care. It's great because it's about build it, but we're all learning together. And then the other one is in terms of a positioning. So now it makes it much easier that then I'm positioned in such a way alongside 25, 30 K speakers. And so from, so I kind of, when my, I really built my speaking business, instead of having to do lots and lots of free gigs or lower price gigs, I decided I'm not going to go that route and I'm just going to go for the, for the higher end. And I have a limit. I, I speak 50 times a year, 50 conferences a year. And that's it. Cause I want a life, you know, it's lifestyle as much as, you know, as, I mean, you're in Puerto Rico today, so you know about lifestyle. I, I I've done the working like the extensive hours for me. It's about maximizing being really focused on my time. And that's, that's why I have a now a bit of a team that help me so I can now just really focus on what I do hopefully well, which is speaking on stages, inspiring people, motivating people, helping people unlock their creative potential. Oh, that's so great. And it's great to have that, 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 that focus and then, and the ability to know exactly what you want to do and, and have had that happen from this journey. And I'm glad you've taken us on that journey. You mentioned something several times throughout this is that you've run the summit and then you've evergreened it. And then you did this summit and you evergreened it. 
can you explain what that is? What does Evergreen mean for our, our newer Summit hosts? And then we're going to get into some of the details of it. So this for me is like the biggest advantage almost of a, of a, of a virtual or online summit as opposed to a, a physical event of some sort is that you can evergreen it. You know, in like, for example, that online guitar summit, even the very first one that we did, we had attendees from I think 92 countries around the world. Most of our summits will have a, from 100 plus countries around the world. It's global. They're all in different, different time zones. But one of the things we discovered pretty early on is, I mean, it's a lot of work to create all this content for a summit and, you know, to put it together. And I thought, this is mad. Like doing all this work for only five days of con producing of an event or 10 days, then I thought, how can I have it that anyone like 24, seven, 365 days, you know, a year, wherever they are in the world, whatever time zone they're on, they can register for the summit and go through it exactly the same way as they went through through a live summit. And I was kind of pondering this and thinking about how to do it. And then I came across the work of Ciprian Solaru, uh, who's, uh, who's, you know, really kind of went, was working on lots of different summits, his own summits, and then also was having the same thing, like how can I evergreen so it can basically work 24 seven, you know, without me. And he showed a couple of things. And in this case, like we can get the tools, like things like using deadline funnels. We already had like CRM stuff. We use Entreport, but you can use Infusionsoft or whatever you have, uh, ConvertKit or you know, all the other CRMs are out there. And it was once we figured out that the technical aspects of it, which takes your head a little bit of a, you know, think about a day to get your head around it, how it works. Once you build it, it's like, it's done. You know, it's, it's done. And so now it's just a case of like, okay, how many people can we, you know, what is our cost per acquisition? What is our, you know, lifetime value of our customer? You know, and then, and, you know, if I'm, if I'm getting, if I'm spending a dollar and I'm getting $1.50 back, I'm going to be spending as much money as possible on that, that, that stream, that, that traffic source, uh, because you've evergreened it. And that's really hard to do because the other big issue that when you, I see loads of people doing, I certainly didn't myself on, on, on probably in the second summit I did this, is I got so focused on the content, I left the marketing and the affiliate stuff till the, too late in the process, and then I ran out of time. I'm like, oh, I just wish I had that time back so I could like go back again, like go to all those partners, get them to promote properly, and I could build out all my you know, Facebook ad campaigns and my link Instagram or LinkedIn or Google campaigns properly. And you could do that with an evergreen summit. So it's amazing. Once you can figure out how to do it, then it's like, this is great. This is great. This is bringing me people in. And I can, you know, every day I, my assistant tells me, okay, we brought in X number of people in this summit, X number of people in this summit. This one, we're spending this amount. If it's bringing us in this amount per day, fantastic. Uh, big believer in evergreening. And the value of it, I, what, what I've seen a lot, and, and unfortunately, and from summit hosts that have ran summits is they've done something similar where they've spent all their time and energy, sometimes six to nine months preparing this summit and occasionally something could be off and the summit doesn't hit the way they wanted it to hit or maybe they didn't get the marketing done the way they wanted to or you know maybe it did fine but they still put six to nine months in it and then it's just done like it's just over it seems like such a waste as you were just saying James so being able to reuse all this information is super valuable and we, we see that in, in a variety of different ways I mean you can all, always repurpose the content use the audio for podcasts use the videos on a, a YouTube channel etc but one of the best ways to use it is to use it exactly what it was created for, which is using it as an evergreen summit. And I've got some insights in that too, but I, I would still, I'd like to pry into your brain a little bit further. Let's, let's go into some of the specifics. Now that we, now that the audience understands what is an evergreen summit, let's talk through some of the, the technical aspects and maybe some of the learning curve you've had as well, like in how you've improved that. Yeah. So the, the way I, we can essentially map it out. So we, what we, we kind of think of our live when we'll do a summit first live and then we'll give it about a month and then we'll essentially then evergreen that summit. So when we do it live and whether, uh, let's say if I, are we using on report, but whether you use infusion soft, so you have some kind of visual builder where you say, okay, people come in here, you know, that we, we have a percentage that convert at this rate to the free pass. And then 
we upsell do an immediately one time offer to a, a VIP pass, which is say forty seven dollars or whatever the price is, and then if people don't sell that, then then we upsell them, try and upsell them to a sixty seven and a hundred seven, whatever the, the price is. So that's kind of you kind of work that out uh, when you do a live summit. VIP um, Evergreen summits are slightly different in that I. You can do a lot of those steps and pricing, but it's a little bit more complicated. So we just went like plain vanilla, basically. We just have like one price as a one-time, you have a free pass, one price as a one-time offer, and then there's a high, there's the, the slightly higher price that people will pay as well. And then right throughout the campaign, essentially these pages are expiring, and that's the way you use a tool like Deadline Funnel. Probably other tools out there, this is just what we use. So it essentially means that when someone goes onto your homepage, it looks for all intents and purposes like the event is going to start in two days' time. The clock countdown tick is clicking, it's saying two days' time. When they sign up, they go into your CRM. They're offered, obviously, immediately the one-time offer for the VIP pass. If they decide not to go on that offer, then because they're, they're being tracked now with the deadline funnel, then every day what's happening is it's, a different deadline funnel is expiring. So like different pages are expiring at a different pace because when you do a live summit, often what you'll do is, you know, a certain time of day, you say you're going off and switching off pages, which is a real pain. You know, I, that's what I did for the first two summits. You know, so your, all, your head is always having like, what pages do I have to expire today? Things like deadline funnels, you don't have to do that. Basically it's done automatically. It's just tracking people as they're going through the process. Saying, okay, they're on day five. Okay. They should be able to see pages from day one, day two, day three. And it's automatically expiring. And then the other cool thing is you're doing is you're adding in all those like influence Robert Cialdini social proof or, or scarcity where you're doing countdown timers, getting people to upgrade at different points as well. But the whole thing, basically the, the time involved is really just setting up at the start. Once you've done it, and especially once you've done your first summit evergreening it, then it's pretty straightforward after that. And as long as you just choose, keep your solutions as simple as possible. So you just probably use a CRM that's doing your emails, hopefully doing your pages as well. And something like a deadline funnels, then those two things can pretty much can work together and you really don't have to think about it. Be sure to check out the speaker management tool inside your virtual summit software, which lets you quickly and easily recruit and manage your speakers on your virtual summit, literally eliminating hundreds of hours of work. Get more information at virtualsummits.com. Yeah, such great insight right there. And thanks for laying that out. Like I can actually see it, how that would roll and how that would run. Point of clarification. So you were saying when they come, they, you have the, the options for them to upgrade and purchase. With, the, with this evergreen option, are they still opting in for free originally? Yeah. 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 So they still opt in all of our summits. There's a free pass. And then, you know, the thing that we're thinking as you start to do more summits, this is the fun. This actually brings a lot of fun into marketing of a, of a, of a evergreens summit because we now treat it as a game about our conversion rates. So we know, let's say how much does it cost to drive a person from Facebook ads onto the opt-in page? And it's going to cost this much. Fine. Okay. So we know that and like how many people we can get under that price. Then what percentage of people will, will convert, will sign up for the VIP pass? So uh, sign up for the, uh, the free pass. And depending on the summit that we're doing, for us, it's been anywhere like from 50 to 70% of those people will immediately just sign up for the, for the VIP, for the, for, the, um, for the free pass. Then we're going to look at, okay, what percentage of those people will then convert to the one-time offer? For us, it will be anywhere from 10 to 20% that will convert to the one-time offer straight there. They'll only have 15 minutes to get that really great low price, which gives them access to all of the interviews for the summit. And then after that, we also have another conversion rate we're looking at, which is how many people then will convert at a later stage, you know, maybe as the summit is running or just as the summit ends. And that will be another percentage. That might be another five, 10 percentage points or something. So then at the end of it, we're basically seeing, okay, this is how much money it's cost us to get people there. This is how much money's come out the other end. And then for us, it's, we just make a calculation of some summits will basically just break even, but that's fine because we have profit maximizers in the back end to upsell them to live events, retreats, my speaking programs, other things. So I don't, 
it's fine as long as it's washing its face the, the evergreen on the price that's great i'm basically getting free list building is what, what's going on there and other summits we do actually make a, a good profit just on the front end you know just on the selling the virtual passes and because we, and then we have maybe affiliate offers and other things on the back end so that's just as you get more experience in creating these summits for yourself you kind of get to know like what are my numbers and and also as you speak to other people in the in the business other hosts they'll share their numbers with you and they're going to vary quite a lot depending on what market you're in. I mean, you mentioned like, I mean like five complete, relatively different markets, guitar playing, creativity training, speaker training, professional speaker training, event organizer training and author training, like five totally different markets and they've all got very different numbers. So you just kind of get to know, you get to track your numbers. And then also the, the final thing I would say is, don't bother the evergreening summits that don't convert well at the start. You know, there's no point in evergreening something if it's a dud. If you do one where you just like, it, it was just, it was hell to get people to even sign up for the free pass. And then you had really bad conversion rates for the VIP passes or the, you know, the triple access all areas pass. Really don't bother. You know, you, you have to really consider whether you even want to evergreen that in the first place. Maybe it's better just taking those interviews, putting them out as podcast interviews. Oh, such great insights. And you answered my question. I was going to be asking you, have you seen the different conversions in the different industries or niches? One point of clarity or one fact for everybody listening here, Virtual Summit hosts in a potentially a very interesting point for you as well, James, is the good thing with the Virtual Summit software is we have the Ever Summit feature. So with one click of a button, it will rerun your summit as if it was live ongoing right. forever. And you can choose whether you want that to be weekly, twice a month, or once a month. And because of the, the ability to change very easily all of the assets, whether it's the speaker images, the colors, the font, it makes it very easy to continue to optimize it ongoing. So That's I, right. I'm, I'm loving this topic because one, I'm a big, big believer in evergreen. And that's also why we made sure that the software had that ever summit feature. In yeah. it. So we're, we're and that's great. I mean, and that's great. The platforms like yours are coming, coming ahead now because even a year or two years ago, it didn't feel like there was anything there. And it was, and uh, I mean, I, I'm, cause I'm into AI and other things. You know, I, I don't mind playing around with stuff and like seeing how things connect. If things break, I'm probably in trouble. But, 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 there's, but there's sometimes you just want to go with that all-in-one solution. So, for example, for our VIP people, uh, the upgrade to VIP, all of that content essentially is hosted on – we use Kajabi. All that content is hosted on Kajabi because it's a, kind of, it's a hosted solution, and I don't have to worry that things are going to be breaking. So if you can, if you have the budget to be able to – and you, someone can – just find that all in one solution, then go for that because you're actually probably better spending that time on, on, on your content, figuring out your content and, and marketing and building your affiliate relationships and your partnerships. Excellent. So I want to keep diving into this. Uh, I've got a couple questions for you continuing in this kind of evergreen strategy area. And I want to come back to the communication sequences. So mm -hmm. we've set up the evergreen sequence. Let's say, you know, we've used Dead, deadline funnels or, you know, virtual summit software with the ever summit feature. Either way, the summit is going to run. Mm -hmm. How do we commu How do you guys set up your email communications to make it one relevant so that you're not having to do this live, obviously, and still convert at a high rate? Yes. Yeah, so the, the emails that are going out. You've essentially got the, the, the free, free people, free pass people emails. And then you've got the VIP people upgrade to VIP. And these are going to, they're going to choose your own adventure almost. So the, the way that we lay out the free, both of these is it's on a, on a on triple, it's like infusion software, like a visual and it's essentially it's just like drag and drop. Like, okay, we want email, then wait for a day then send another email then wait for a day then fire this trigger then wait for a day. So, so the, the actual sequencing of things is pretty straightforward in terms of what's in the emails essentially the way that we have it so that when someone initially goes and they register for a free pass, let's assume they don't upgrade immediately to a VIP pass. They will get a confirmation saying immediately, I oh, sorry, within 15 minutes, we actually hold it for 15 minutes and then it sends them. And the reason we hold it is because we're making that one time offer to them and we don't want them just going into the in inbox and just like looking for the emails. Just say, listen, 
it's going to be coming. It'll be arriving in the next 15 to 30 minutes. But in the meantime, let me tell you about this amazing offer that we have. You can upgrade now. But if they don't upgrade, that's fine at that stage. Then they'll get the email in fit, fit after 15 minutes. And that says, here's all the information about the summit. And we've got you. You can expect the email starting to come out to you. Here's a link to download the handbook. So there's a PDF handbook uh, for it as well. And also here's a link to register for the, the summit Facebook group. And there's a free Facebook group and a VIP Facebook group. So that's the first one. And then a day later, they will get another, say, Hey, just to let remind you that the summit starts in 24 hours. You still have time, time to upgrade to your VIP pass. Here's just click here to upgrade and, and just keep an eye out for the emails to start tomorrow. Make sure they don't go into spam folder, etc. And then when the event starts itself, essentially if it's a, say it's a seven day summit, there's an email coming out every day. And in that email, it lists like the, the 10 interviews for that day with the links, the direct links. And those in our case, they're going to entre pages, which is just a pages, but they have that lead funnel deadline funnel link. They're using deadline funnel links. So they'll automatically expire after 24 hours or 48 hours. So people are kind of going through that. So if people go to, let's say they get an email on day one and they try and check that email on day five, those links are just going to go straight to a sales page. They're not going to work anymore. Uh, so that deals with that, that part. And then they're getting email day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Then probably around, if it's a seven day summit, probably around day five, we'll send two emails in a day. One is just about upgrading. And another one on day six, we'll send another one just about upgrading, maybe adding a bit more about like a test, some testimonials, social proof. And then day seven, final one, we'll do a final push. Maybe two days later, we'll do a final push for it. And then we kind of leave them alone. And we basically, they we come out, we, for the next 30 days, we don't really speak to them. We just let, let it cool down for a little bit. And then depending on what summit they've gone into and how they've come into it, we'll send them into a different, different place. And so if, for example, that place may be into uh, a funnel up like a, a Jeff Walker style PLF funnel to upgrade for a course or buy a product or something, it may be into a, join a wait list for a live event, you know, an offer to join on the wait list. It may be into an, send them a series of affiliate offers it may just be into our general nurturing campaigns. That is such great insight right there. That email sequence setup is, is so key. And the fact that you guys have ironed that out and lined it out so it happens just automatically. You've said it like you said once, and then you just let it run. That's, that's fantastic. Now, I want to kind of shift gears just a little bit in, the, in the, the last few minutes that we have and talk about something we were, we were discussing previously in our pre-interview chat, which is, corporate summits. I'd love for you to, to kind of introduce our summit host to that idea and what you're doing with this. Yeah. So because of the history of online summits, they've come from the online marketing world. And so most of the people that do online summits are, are very familiar with that world. Traditionally is very B2C, very consumer focused, which is great. And is obviously, you know, whether it's health and fitness, you know, I'm a vegan. So like I'm watching like vegan online summits. I love, you know, all those kind of things. Maybe things about marketing. So where someone's got a credit card and they're paying with a credit card for that VIP pass. Summits are great. But then what we noticed is when we did a summit called Event Professional Summit, we said, you know, I don't think we're going to get as many people upgrading for the VIP because whether that person would personally pay themselves with their credit card to that VIP pass, if this is about continuing ed's continue education in the company, we're going to see lower rates. I just sensed it. So we, we did a slightly different thing, which is where we went after sponsors for the summit. And that was interesting because what we started doing is we created a sponsorship packages, three sponsorship packages, and those could include the, the, the premium package was things like they would, there, there would be mentions on the pages of their logos we would, at the end of our summit, we'd maybe spend a day promoting their particular event or whatever their product was, for example. With the Ever Summit feature inside the Virtual Summit software, you can rerun your summit as if it were live ongoing forever with one click of a button. 
This now lets you continue to use your summit forever, bringing in qualified and engaged leads every month into your business. Get more information at virtualsummit.com. So we, we had these three different price packages and they kind of really took off. And we got in, we got a lot of, we could have sold actually even more sponsorships. <laughs> we had to kind of stop. Uh, and we just said, we were just really honest with everyone. We just said, listen, we're just going to apply that money straight back into advertising. So we get more people coming on the summit and learning about your brand and learning about this, this amazing summit that we're doing. And that's what we did. So that kind of got me to think, oh, this is interesting. And then, so think about more the B2B side. And then I started having conversations with clients I'm out going speaking at their conferences for. And many of the conferences I speak for, they are, they are groups of, smaller groups of maybe 150 to 300 people, C-suite executives, you know, very kind of privileged information that these people are sharing with each other. So these are the big like financial companies, hedge fund investors. You know, these are the people you don't see publicly a lot, but these are their private events. Sometimes they're their client facing events where they're sharing the latest strategies and tactics with their clients. But for these events, they're always thinking about how can we get more people into, into our world, understanding to build, to build their positioning. And also when I go and speak for more associations, they're always looking for new members and continuing education and training for their members. So a whole a series, a whole bunch of them started coming to me and say, James, could we create summits for our brand? And that might be a, a medical company that wants to create a summit specifically for doctors about, about COPD or diabetes or whatever the thing is there. So it's about continuing education for doctors. Then there might be other ones for associations where it's, in fact, even the event professionals association uh, were doing a, a summit for event professionals. It might be, I got asked to do one the other day because I speak about artificial intelligence, a very well-known institution, which is a university, asking about creating an online summit. So a traditional university creating a virtual summit, it's getting involved in this strange world of kind of online marketing stuff. And so I started seeing this as opportunity now, and I'm only just kind of putting my foot slightly in the water, but I'm sure there's other people out there that, can, that are doing it really, really well of approaching big brands and saying, listen, it's it, it, some of the greatest brands now, they, 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 their brand is about teaching. It's about inspiring. It's about sharing ideas. If I think about some of the best, let's say um, Beyond Burger, the, these new protein vegan burgers, like for them creating a summit where they bring the best experts on living healthy and vegan lifestyle and the latest technology involved in creating vegan foods, that's an interesting summit. And that's building their brand, you know, as Beyond Burger. Beyond Burger isn't doing one, but I'm just giving an example here. So you can start going out for all these companies, both more consumer-facing big companies and also real under the, the radar, you know, smart companies are doing things. And just saying, if you enjoy creating summits and maybe hosting some, go to them and say, listen, why don't I host and we'll create an entire summit for your brand? Give me, you know, 100 grand and we'll create a summit for you and it's going to be an amazing summit and we can guarantee to have X number of people there and we'll put some of the money we'll put into advertising and, and we'll make it really simple for you and help raise your brand up and bring you in fresh leads. That's, that's an interesting value proposition if I was a, a marketing VP at a company. It is. And it's, and I believe that there are going to be even more of them coming on board and starting to see this. I've, I've heard of and seen some pretty big corporate businesses now starting to do that. We've actually had some reach out to us about the software. So I know a lot of corporate right. companies are starting to look into that. So this is a really great opportunity that you've already jumped in there. And James, like this has been such an amazing time chatting with you, picking your brain. I know we got a lot of summit hosts on here that are going, Hey, I need speakers. And James sounds like an awesome speaker. He's obviously a professional speaker. So before we wrap up here, would you mind just telling those summit hosts, like maybe one or two things that you would love to kind of speak on and the best way for them to get in touch with you? Sure. So the simplest way, if you want to just check out my stuff, just go to jamestaylor.me.me. But if you want to see all this process for yourself, go through it. Go to internationalspeakerssummit.com. That's an evergreen summit. 
that's 125, I've interviewed 125 of the world's best keynote speakers. So you not only learn about the back, like how these virtual evergreen summits work, but you'll also learn from the best speakers. Because if you start to raise your brand as a summit host, the next logical step for you is to get onto physical stages around the world. And it, you know, that's one of the things I love doing. I love, we have a thing called Speakers You, where I work with speakers, aspiring and professional speakers one-on-one -on -one to blow up their brand and get them onto stages all around the world. There is so much opportunity. In the States alone, there's like 1.2 million events per year that are looking for professional speakers and speakers. You know, globally, it's just, the, the mum, numbers are huge. They're mind-blowing. So you could think about the, your virtual summit as a way to create that virtual halo around you. And then you can reach out to someone like me or you know, learn about how to then take that and get yourself up onto those physical stages. So you're in front of whether it's the 100, 200 people in your area or the, the 2,000, the 5,000 people in those bigger stages. So make sure you reach out to James right there. Go check out his summit. We'll have links to all of that, to him, to the information we've talked about in this episode over in the show notes at podcast.virtualsummits.com. I highly recommend reaching out to him, checking out the summit that he was just mentioning and seeing how the Ever Summit or the Evergreen portion of that runs. Check out how the deadline funnels work. Check out the email copy too. Redissect it right there. James, I just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your schedule. Be here, share your wisdom, your knowledge on Evergreen, and then this corporate B2B summits. Thank you so much. My, my pleasure. Great, great being on the show. Absolutely. And you, show, you summit hosts out there, thank you for spending the time with me and James. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thanks for listening. Now, don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star review on the Virtual Summit Podcast. Head over to the show notes to check out all the links and resources from this episode and be sure to grab your free trial of the Virtual Summit software. Now, I want to end this episode by saying to all the Summit hosts listening right now, I believe in you and you can do this. Summits are by far one of the most powerful ways to quickly grow your list, launch your platform, make more money, and most importantly, make an impact in the world, even if you're just getting started. So don't get caught up in analysis paralysis because the world needs to hear your message and there are people who are waiting for you to help them. So just get started because imperfect action is always better than no action. Thank you and see you on the next episode.